one in 26 people in this country will develop epilepsy at some time in their life. And the occurrence of epilepsy is higher in young children and older adults. Dr. Angel Hernandez is a new division chief for pediatric neurosciences at Helen DeVos Children's Hospital. And he's here today to talk about options for children. So let's start from the beginning. What is epilepsy and how would a parent or a person know if their child may have it? So epilepsy uh, is anyone that has had more than two unprovoked seizures. So people refer to epilepsy at times as seizure disorder mm -hmm. and epilepsy are interchangeable uh, names. So people that have seizures, uh, they have a sudden electrical impulse of discharge where brain cells are not communicating the way they should be communicating and this evolve into a major event that you can see it physically by either a child staring or it could be a, a jerking of one extremity. Um, so it, it was become very obvious to the family that there's something very different happening with yeah. their child. And so how do you treat the seizures and the epilepsy? So there are many ways you can treat seizures, but the immediate, the first line of treatment is medication. And there are multiple seizure medications depending on the type of epilepsy that the child may have. Um, there's also other ways we can treat it, including uh, different diets that have been uh, available for many, many uh, years uh, to treat children when medications do not help. And finally, we also have surgery. As difficult as it sounds, sometimes surgery uh, becomes a, a critical uh, treatment in many of these children. Yeah, and what can you do for children who have epilepsy that is very difficult to control because uh, we were talking just a minute ago and you had said there are some who have up to or more than a hundred seizures, seizures a, day. a day. Yes. So um, for those children that have very difficult to control seizures, meaning that they're not responding to two or more anti-seizure medications, um, there is an alternative of doing a further evaluation by bringing them into the hospital and monitoring them with EEG uh, which is a way for us to monitor brainwave activity in the brain and in order for us to be able to do that sometimes patients have to come into the hospital to a very specialized unit that we have at Helen DeVos Children's Hospital where children come in they get a stickers on their head we call them uh, electrodes uh, and we monitor their brainwave activity and try to find out whether they could be surgical candidates. Mm -hmm. When we were looking a minute ago at the treatment options, there was something that said the ketogenic diet. Can yes. you elaborate on what that is? So the ketogenic diet is reserved for children that have very difficult to control epilepsy. This is okay. not first line treatment. It is a very rigorous diet. Um, it, is, it is four times fat and one time carbohydrate and protein. So very high rich in fat, very little carbohydrate and you have to weigh everything. Uh, we are great believers of the ketogenic diet, but for specific situations, it, this doesn't help every single child. Plus, mm -hmm. many children have difficulty tolerating this diet. Sure. And what about surgery options? Because I think when people hear that word, uh, they get a little alarmed, but it is the right option for some people. Uh, absolutely. There are some children that do not respond to medication and those children we tend to evaluate first to make sure that they are good candidates for this type of procedure. And many children uh, can benefit tremendously from epilepsy surgery. And those children that we, that we operate on, we sometimes operate on with minimally invasive ways where mm -hmm. we don't have to you know, remove a skull or anything. We just put in a little laser beam into the brain and destroy the brain tissue that's producing the seizures. Yeah, as we said when we first started this interview, we talked about epilepsy and it especially being apparent in young children and older adults. Why those particular age groups, Dr. Hernandez? Well, very young children, their brain is still developing. Mm -hmm. um, there are things that could go wrong as, as they develop, things that no one has any control of and in very young children and older adults they have um, different conditions that per cause them to have more seizures for example the infants brain is still developing in the uh, adults and elderly um, they have other conditions like alzheimer's parkinson's disease that can also contribute to their 
uh, uh, onset of epilepsy. Mm -hmm. If anyone has questions, what should they do? Talk to their physician? Or? They should talk to their physician first, and if there's any concerns, their physician will refer them to a neurologist. Yeah, well, you answered a lot of good, good questions. We want to thank you so much for yeah. uh, coming in and talking about the topic. Happy to be here. Thank There's you. There's the contact information as well, and we'll put that online so it's easy to find. Thank you. We'll be back with much more 8 West. Don't go away. Are you West?